house on fire No one could save me but you It's strange what this I make for you Hi, this is John Cullen and welcome to Bedtime Stories I never dreamed that I met somebody like you I never dreamed that I loved somebody like you Hi, this is John Cohen. Welcome to another episode of Bedtime Stories. In this episode, we're going to be looking at the 2020-2021 flu season summary from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, the CDC, in the United States. I'm at the CDC's website, cdc.gov forward slash flu forward slash season forward slash FAQ flu season 2020-2021.htm. And I'll be reading this in this episode. 2020-2021 flu season summary. Updated July 22nd, 2021. I'm recording this September 29th, 2021, about eight weeks after this most recent update from the CDC. Summary. What was the 2020-2021 flu season like? Flu activity was unusually low. Throughout the 2020-2021 flu season, both in the United States and globally, despite high levels of testing. During September 28, 2020 to May 22, 2021 in the United States, 1,675.2% of 818,939 respiratory specimens tested by U.S. clinical laboratories were positive for an influenza virus. The low level of flu activity during this past season contributed to dramatically fewer flu illnesses, hospitalizations, and deaths compared with previous flu seasons. For comparison, during the last three seasons before the pandemic, the proportion of respiratory specimens testing positive for influenza peaked between 26.2 and 30.3%. In terms of hospitalizations, the cumulative rate of laboratory-confirmed influenza-associated hospitalizations in the 2020-2021 season was the lowest recorded since this type of data collection began. In 2005, for pediatric deaths, CDC received one report of a pediatric flu death in a child during the 2020-2021 flu season. Since flu deaths in children became nationally notifiable in 2004, reported flu deaths in children had previously ranged from a low of 37 during 2011 to 2012 to a high of 199 during 2019-2020. What are possible explanations for the unusually low flu activity? COVID-19 mitigation measures, such as wearing face masks, Staying home, hand washing, school closures, reduced travel, increased ventilation of indoor spaces, 
and physical distancing likely contributed to the decline in 2020-2021 flu incidents, hospitalizations, and deaths. Influenza vaccination may also contributed to reduced flu illness during the 2020-2021 season. Flu vaccine effectiveness estimates for 2020-2021 are not available, but a record number of influenza vaccine doses, 193.8 million doses, were distributed in the U.S. during 2020-2021. How many people got vaccinated against flu during the 2020-2021 flu season, and how does that compare to previous seasons? CDC works each year to increase the number of people who receive a flu vaccine and eliminate barriers to vaccination. Influenza vaccine production and distribution in the U.S. are primarily private sector endeavors. But during the 2020-2021 flu season, as part of efforts to maximize flu vaccination by increasing availability of vaccine, CDC purchased an additional 2 million doses of pediatric and 9.3 million doses of adult influenza vaccine to create a stockpile of vaccine in case of supply problems. While final estimates are pending, early estimates, based on survey data, suggest flu vaccination uptake for 2020-2021 was similar to the prior season with small increases among some groups of people and small decreases among other groups of people. Preliminary estimates indicate that 50 to 55% of adults got a flu vaccine, compared with the 2019-2020 estimate of 48% by end of May 2020. Influenza vaccination coverage in children dropped 4.1 percentage points from 62.3 during 2019-2020 to 58.2 during 2020-2021. And estimates for pregnant people and healthcare personnel indicated slight decreases in influenza vaccine coverage. Racial and ethnic disparities in flu vaccine uptake persisted for children and adults because racial and ethnic minority groups might be at higher risk for developing serious illness resulting from flu that may lead to hospitalization. Flu vaccination is especially important for these communities. Flu activity. Did new Flu viruses circulate during the 2020 2021 flu season. Flu viruses are constantly changing, so it's not unusual for new flu viruses to appear each year. During the 2020 2021 flu season, there was very low circulation of seasonal flu viruses. During September 27, 2020, to May 22, 2021, in the United States, 1,899.2% of 1,081,671 clinical samples tested were positive for an influenza virus. 713 influenza A, 37.5%. And 1,186, 62.5% influenza B. During that same period, public health laboratories reported 61.4% of influenza positive samples were influenza A, and 38.6% of positive samples were influenza B. The majority, 52.5% of influenza A viruses, were H3N2. 
and the majority 60% of influenza B viruses were of Victoria lineage. In terms of novel influenza viruses, CDC reported five human infections with an influenza virus that usually spreads in pigs and not people, called the variant influenza virus. In the United States, all five of these infections occurred in people who reported that they had direct exposure to pigs or lived on a property where pigs were present. No person-to-person -person spread of variant influenza was identified associated with any of these patients. These types of infections occur in people rarely, and usually in the context of exposure to pigs, but are concerning because of their uh, pandemic potential. Since 2005, a total of 489 variant influenza virus infections have been identified in the United States and reported to the CDC. More information about how flu viruses change is available. Flu vaccine. What flu viruses did the 2020-2021 flu vaccines protect against? For 2020-2021, trivalent three-component egg-based vaccines contained A. Guangdong Malnan SWL1536 2019 H1N1 PDM09 like virus updated A Hong Kong 2671 2019 H3N2 like virus updated B Washington O2 2019 B Victoria lineage like virus updated quadrivalent four component egg based vaccines which protect against a second lineage of B viruses contained the three recommended viruses above plus B Phuket 3073 2013 like Yamagata lineage virus for 2020-2021, cell or recombinant-based vaccines contained A. Hawaii, 70, 2019 H1N1 PDM09-like virus, updated. A. Hong Kong, 45, 2019 H3N2 like virus, updated. B. Washington, 02, 2019 B. B, Victoria lineage-like virus, updated, and B, Phuket, 3073, 2013-like Yamagata lineage virus. Were there any changes to the 2020-2021 Northern Hemisphere vaccines from what was included in 2019-2020 U.S. flu vaccines? Yes, 2020-2021 flu vaccines were updated to better match the flu viruses that were expected to circulate in the United States. The egg-based H1N1 vaccine component was updated from an A. Brisbane 02 2018 H1N1 pdm 9 like virus to an A. Guangdong Malnan SWL1536 2019 H1N1 PDM09 like virus. The cell or recombinant based H1N1 vaccine component was updated from an A. Brisbane 02 2018 H1N1 PDM09 like virus to an A. Hawaii 70. 2019 H1N1 PDM09 like virus. The egg based H3N2 vaccine component was updated from an A Kansas 1 4 2017 H3N2 like virus to an A Hong Kong 2671 2019 H3N2 like virus. 
the cell or recombinant base stage 3N2 vaccine component was updated from an A. Kansas 14-2017 H3N2-like virus to an A. Hong Kong 45-2019 H3N2-like virus. The B lineage, the B Victoria lineage vaccine component, was updated from a B Colorado 06-2019 B Victoria lineage-like virus to a B Washington 02-2019 B Victoria lineage-like virus. The B Yamagata lineage vaccine component was not updated. Were there any new vaccines licensed for use during the 2020-2021 flu season? There were two new vaccines licensed for use during the 2020-2021 flu season. The first was a quadrivalent high-dose vaccine licensed for use in adults 65 years and older. This vaccine replaced the previously licensed trivalent high-dose vaccine. The second new vaccine for the 2020-2021 flu season was a quadrivalent adjuvanted vaccine licensed for use in adults 65 and older. This vaccine was similar to the previously licensed trivalent vaccine containing MF59 adjuvant, but it has one additional influenza B component. More information about new vaccines available in 2021. 2020-2021. What flu vaccines were recommended during the 2020-2021 season? For the 2020-2021 flu season, providers could choose to administer any licensed, age-appropriate flu vaccine, IIV, RIV-4, or LAIV-4, with no preference for any one vaccine over another. Vaccine options included standard-dose flu shots, high-dose shots for people 65 and older, Shots made with adjuvant for people 65 years and older. Shots made with virus grown in cell culture. No eggs are involved in the production of this vaccine. Recombinant vaccine that do not require having a candidate vaccine virus CVV sample to produce. And the live attenuated influenza vaccine, LAIV. Vaccine made with attenuated, weakened live virus that is given by nasal spray. Flu vaccine availability. How many flu vaccines were available for the 2020-2021 flu season? Flu vaccine is produced by private manufacturers, so supply depends on manufacturers. For the 2020-2021 season, manufacturers projected they would provide as many as 194 to 198 million doses of flu vaccine, which is more than the 175 million dose record set during the 2019-2020 flu season. 193.8 million doses of flu vaccine had been distributed in the United States as of February 26, 2021, the highest number of doses in a single flu season. CDC provided weekly updates on total flu vaccine doses distributed throughout the 2020-2021 flu season. Were there delays in the availability of flu vaccine? Influenza vaccine manufacturers did not report any significant delays in national flu vaccine supply or distribution during 2020-2021. Were there enough doses of flu vaccine available for the 2020-2021 flu vaccine season? Flu season, yes, vaccine manufacturers reported distributing 
193.8 million doses of flu vaccine in the United States as of February 26, 2021. This was more flu vaccine than had ever previously been distributed in the United States. Some of this distributed vaccine was likely not, was likely, was not min- administered. In the United States, in general, every year, there are a number of doses of flu vaccine that go unused. CDC provided weekly updates on total flu vaccine doses distributed throughout the 2020-2021 flu season. Flu vaccines during the COVID-19 pandemic. Did we need to get a flu vaccine earlier? during the 2020-2021 flu season, i.e. July-August. There was no change in CDC's recommendation on timing of vaccination last flu season. Getting vaccinated in July or August is too early, especially for older people, because of the likelihood of reduced protection against flu later in the flu season. September and October are good times to get vaccinated. However, as long as flu viruses are circulating, vaccination should continue, even in January or later. More information for vaccination timing for the 2020-2021 flu season. Were there changes in how and where flu vaccines were given in fall and winter or 2020-2021? Prior to the 2020-2021 flu season, CDC worked with healthcare providers and state and local health departments to develop contingency plans on how to vaccinate people against flu without increasing their risk of exposure to respiratory disease like the virus that causes COVID-19. This included releasing interim guidance for immunization services during the COVID-19 pandemic. Preliminary coverage data from September 2020 suggests there were some changes in where people got vaccinated earlier in 2020-2021. For example, the proportion of people reporting getting a flu vaccination at a store, 53.8%, was significantly higher than the equivalent proportion for the 2019-2020 season, 34.9%, and the proportion reporting vaccination at a doctor's office was significantly lower than 2019-2020, 29.7 versus 37.3%. Were flu vaccines and COVID-19 vaccines given at the same time? During the 2020-2021 season? No. As recommended by ACIP, during the 2020-2021 flu season, out of an abundance of caution, COVID-19 vaccines were administered alone with a minimum interval of 14 days before or after administration of any other vaccines, including influenza vaccines. This recommendation has since been updated. What did CDC do to promote flu vaccination during the COVID-19 pandemic? To address the importance of flu vaccination, especially during the COVID-19 pandemic, CDC increased the availability of vaccine, including purchasing an additional 2 million doses of pediatric flu vaccine and 9.3 million doses of adult flu vaccine to create a stockpile of vaccine in case of supply problems. CDC also emphasized the importance of flu vaccination for the entire flu season and conducted targeted communication outreach to specific groups who are at higher risk for complications from flu. These same groups are often at higher risk for COVID-19 too, so protecting them from influenza was important 
to decrease their risk of co-infection. Communication strategies for providers and the public included educational outreach activities by CDC, including social media, press conferences, web page spotlights, radio media tours, op-eds, and other publications. A digital campaign to educate the general public and people with who are at increased risk from influenza and COVID-19 complications. Special educational efforts to inform the general population, people with underlying health conditions, and African American and Hispanic audiences about the importance of flu vaccination and updated vaccination websites for the public and providers that highlight the safety precautions being implemented in healthcare facilities during the pandemic. Flu vaccine coverage. What vaccine uptake estimates did CDC provide during the 2020 2021 season? CDC developed a new weekly national influenza vaccination dashboard designed to share preliminary, in-season, weekly influenza vaccination coverage estimates and related data. The dashboard included information on the number of influenza vaccine doses distributed in the United States weekly flu vaccination coverage rates for children 6 months to 17 years old, monthly flu vaccination coverage rates among pregnant persons, and information on how many flu vaccines were administered in pharmacies and doctor's offices. The data was updated weekly or monthly depending on the data source, throughout the 2020-2021 influenza season. Other data sources were added as they become available. Visit the National Influenza Vaccination Dashboard for more information. National Weekly National Flu Vaccination Dashboard. This dashboard and data will be updated starting October 7th, 2021, in conjunction with 2021 NFID Influenza Pneumococcal Disease News Conference. Supply data for this and previous seasons are available. So here's the dashboard that we will get to see in October. How did... CDC track weekly flu vaccination coverage among children 6 months to 17 years old. Influenza vaccination coverage among children was assessed through the National Immunization Survey Flu, NIS Flu, which provided weekly influenza vaccination coverage estimates for children 6 months to 17 years old. NIS flu is a national, random-digit-dialed cellular telephone survey of households conducted during the flu season, October through June. Additional information about NIS flu methods and estimates from 2019 and 2020 are available at FluVaxView. How did CDC track monthly flu vaccination coverage among pregnant women? Monthly flu vaccination coverage estimates among pregnant women are based on electronic health record data from the Vaccine Safety Data Link, VSD a collaboration between CDC's Immunization Safety Office and nine integrated healthcare organizations. Of note, because 
these estimates are based on data from nine integrated healthcare systems, they may not be representative of all pregnant women in the U.S. How did CDC track the number of flu vaccines administered at pharmacies and doctor's offices? CDC tracked the number of flu vaccines administered at pharmacies and doctor's offices by using new sources of vaccination data, including IQVIA data for vaccinations administered in retail pharmacies, e.g. chain, mass merchandise, food stores, and independent pharmacies, and doctor's offices. When were the first flu vaccine uptake estimates provided the 2020-2021 season? CDC launched the first weekly flu vax view dashboard in December. The number of flu vaccine doses distributed, vaccination coverage estimates for children, and vaccinations administered in retail pharmacies and doctor's offices were updated weekly. Coverage estimates for pregnant women were updated monthly. Visit the National Influenza Vaccination Dashboard for more information. Was this same kind of vaccine uptake information that is... Was this the same kind of vaccine uptake information that has been provided in the past? For each flu season since 2009-2010... CDC has estimated annual influenza vaccination coverage for the United States by using data from several nationally representative surveys. The Behavioral Risk Factor Surveillance System, BRFSS, the National Health Interview Survey, NHIS, and the National Immunization Survey Flu, NIS Flu, Internet Panel Surveys of Adults, Healthcare Personnel, and Pregnant Women are also used. Click here for vaccination coverage estimates from past flu seasons. CDC will continue to provide end-of-season estimates of influenza vaccination coverage from these data sources. For the 2020-2021 flu season, CDC provided weekly updates on the number of flu vaccine doses distributed, vaccination coverage estimates for children, and the number of doses administered in pharmacies and doctor's offices. Coverage estimates for pregnant women or updated monthly. Is CDC working to improve influenza vaccine uptake data? CDC is exploring non-survey data sources, such as claims and other administrative data, to track flu vaccination coverage. For example, CDC is exploring ways to estimate within-season influenza vaccination coverage among adults using data on the number of doses administered in pharmacies and doctor's offices and estimates of the proportion of all influenza vaccinations that are received in these settings. CDC supports state and local jurisdictions in use of their immunization information systems to assess influenza vaccination coverage at the jurisdictional level. Flu surveillance data updates. Were there any updates in the methods for flu surveillance for 2020-2021? For the 2020-2021 flu season, there were some changes to FluView surveillance methodology. 
In addition to state-level data, the Influenza-like Illness ILI Activity Map displayed ILI activity by core-based statistical areas, CBSA. A U.S. geographic area defined by the Office of Management and Budget that consists of one or more counties or equivalents anchored by an urban center of at least 10,000 people plus adjacent counties that are socioeconomically tied to the urban center by commuting. Also, during most flu seasons, state and territorial health departments report the level of geographic spread of flu activity in their jurisdictions each week through the State and Territorial Epidemiologists Report. However, because COVID-19 and influenza have similar symptoms, and it's difficult to differentiate the two without laboratory testing, reporting for this system was suspended for the 2020-2021 influenza season. Finally, NCHS collects death certificate data for all deaths occurring in the United States, and these data are aggregated by the week of death occurrence. In previous flu seasons, the NCHS surveillance data were used to calculate the percent of all deaths occurring each week that had pneumonia and or influenza, PNI, listed as a cause of death. Because many COVID-19 related deaths also have pneumonia, COVID-19 coded deaths were added to PNI to create P and I C, pneumonia, influenza, and or COVID-19 classification. P I C includes all deaths with pneumonia, influenza, and or COVID-19 listed on the death certificate. More information on flu surveillance methodology and these updates is available online. Why was pneumonia, influenza, and COVID-19, PIC, mortality data added to FluView Interactive? CDC monitors flu deaths each week using death certificate data collected by the National Center for Health Statistics. National Center for Health Statistics mortality surveillance data was used in previous years to calculate the percentage of all U.S. deaths occurring each week that had pneumonia and or influenza, PNI, listed as a cause of death on the death certificate. Pneumonia is included because it's a frequent complication of severe influenza and increases in flu activity are associated with increases in pneumonia deaths. The weekly percentage of PNI deaths is compared to the expected percentage of deaths due to pneumonia to estimate the increase in pneumonia deaths or excess deaths due to influenza. Because pneumonia is also a frequent cause of death among people with COVID-19, COVID-19 coded deaths were added to PNI to create the PIC, pneumonia, influenza, and or COVID-19 mortality classification. CDC has displayed PIC mortality in its flu view report since week 40 of 2020. In addition, to make these data more easily downloadable and interactive, CDC incorporated PIC mortality data into its flu view interactive data dashboard. 
an online data resource that accompanies the FluView report. Using FluView Interactive, users can download Flu data and view this data via detailed interactive graphs, charts, maps, and other visualizations. I'm not going to read all of the FAQs, but let's take a look at a couple of these FAQs. Uh, this is, again, as of July 20th, 2021, and this is about the flu season. Uh, I'm going to go to flu and COVID, and let's take a look at this. What is the difference between influenza, flu, and COVID-19? Let's see what they have here. Influenza, flu, and COVID-19 are both contagious respiratory illnesses, but they're caused by different viruses. COVID-19 is caused by infection with a new coronavirus called SARS-CoV-2, and flu is caused by infection with influenza viruses. Because some of the symptoms of flu and COVID-19 are similar, it may be hard to tell the difference between them based on symptoms alone and testing may be needed to help confirm a diagnosis. COVID-19 seems to spread more easily than flu and causes more serious illnesses in some people. It can also take longer before people show symptoms, and people can be contagious for longer. While more is learned every day, there's still a lot that is unknown about COVID-19 and the virus that causes it. This page compares COVID-19 and flu given the best available information to date. Can I have flu and COVID-19 at the same time? Yes, it is possible have flu. I think they left out a word here. Yes, it is possible to have flu as well as other respiratory illnesses, and COVID-19 at the same time. Health experts are still studying how common this can be. Some of the symptoms of flu and COVID-19 are similar, making it hard to tell the difference between them based on symptoms alone. Diagnostic testing can help determine if you're sick with flu or COVID-19. Is there a test that can detect both flu and COVID-19? Yes, CDC has developed a test that will check for A and B type seasonal flu viruses and SARS-CoV-2, the virus that causes COVID-19. This test will be used by U.S. public health laboratories. Testing for these viruses at the same time will give public health officials important information about how flu and COVID-19 are spreading and what prevention steps should be taken. The test will also help public health laboratories save time and testing materials and to possibly return test results faster. The Food and Drug Administration has given CDC an emergency use authorization for this new test. Initial test kits were sent to public health laboratories in early August 2020. CDC will continue to manufacture and distribute these kits. More information for laboratories is available. Will the new test that detects both flu and COVID-19 replace other tests? No. This new test is designed for use at CDC-supported public health laboratories at state and local levels, where it will supplement and streamline surveillance for flu and COVID-19. The use of this specialized test will be focused on public health surveillance efforts and will not replace any COVID-19 tests currently used in commercial laboratories, hospitals, clinics, and other healthcare settings. 
CDC's first viral test for SARS-CoV-2, the CDC 2009 NCOV real-time RT-PCR Diagnostic Panel ER34, will still be available for qualified laboratories to order through the International Reagent Resource, IRR. The new multiplex assay can be ordered through the IRR. Check the IRR website for details. For additional questions, please visit Clinical Questions About COVID-19, Questions and Answers, Testing, Diagnosis, and Notification. Is COVID-19 more dangerous than flu? Flu and COVID-19 can both result in serious illness, including illness resulting in hospitalization or death. While there is still much to learn about COVID-19, recent studies show it does seem as if COVID-19 is more deadly than seasonal influenza. Will a flu vaccine protect me against COVID-19? Getting a flu vaccine will not protect against COVID-19. However, flu vaccination has many other important benefits. Flu vaccines have been shown to reduce the risk of flu illness, hospitalization, and death. Getting a flu vaccine this fall will be more important than ever, not only to reduce your risk from flu, but also to help conserve potentially scarce health care resources. <clears throat> Does a flu vaccination increase your risk of getting COVID-19? No, there's no evidence that getting a flu vaccination increases your risk of getting sick from a coronavirus like the one that causes COVID-19. Because the symptoms of flu and COVID-19 are similar, how will I know if I have flu or COVID-19? Although there are some differences between flu and COVID-19, they also share signs and symptoms. For this reason, it may be hard to tell the difference between them based on symptoms alone. Testing may be needed to help confirm a diagnosis. Get more information on symptoms of COVID-19 and flu. I think I may have flu. Is it safe for me to visit my healthcare provider during the COVID-19 pandemic? Are there any updates in the methods for flu surveillance in the upcoming season? For the 2020-2021 flu season, there are some changes to flu view surveillance methodology. This season, in addition to state-level data, the Influenza-Like Illness ILI Activity Map will display ILI activity by core-based statistical areas. Do influenza antiviral medications have any positive or negative impact on a concurrent COVID-19 infection? Influenza antiviral medications have no activity against SARS-CoV-2 viruses, nor do they interact with medications used for treatment of COVID-19 patients. If a patient who's at high risk for serious influenza complications is diagnosed with SARS-CoV-2 and influenza virus co-infection, they should receive influenza antiviral treatment. I'm John Cullen. Thanks for joining Bedtime Stories.
without you. What a wicked game you play to make me feel this way. What a wicked thing to do to let me dream of you. What a wicked thing to say. You never felt this way. What a wicked thing to do to make me dream of you. And I. Without you, mm. without you, mm. the world was on fire. No one. Save me for you. The strange world is I make foolish people do. I never dreamed that I love somebody like you. I never dreamed that I love somebody like you. Without you Without you oh. Without you